Um, is this a product like a shampoo that is going to need to be refilled and replenished? If so, you're going to want to follow up with somebody differently than if you're buying like, you know, a home mortgage. You know, totally different types of product here. So what when following up with a brand new customer, um, you always want to look at like what's what's the next? Like what is their second sale? Uh, if there is one or in the case of like selling a mortgage, maybe the, the second sale quote is serving them very well and then six months later, you know, having an aggressive referral campaign. Um, so let's say that we're doing a, a one-time use product that, you know, is, is again, refillable. So, uh, or actually let's say, let's say, keep it easy. You buy it once. So like I'm only going to buy an ebook once or I'm only going to buy a hammer once or something like that. What you want to do is in your follow-up, you want to make sure that you're empowering people to get the most value that they can out of their purchase. So if somebody just bought like an ebook, for example, I can follow up and be like, hey, on page 14, I spoke about this. Here's a worksheet to help you out with that. Um, giving like little hidden bonuses and being cool, people like that. Um, if it's a service-based thing, let's say you're a uh, you mow lawns, you're a lawn service, right? Your follow-up is probably going to be maybe a little more transactional and priming them for another seasonal sale. So, hey, thanks for letting us come out and do your yard. You know, here's a couple of tips to keep your stuff looking nice, and you know, we'll stay in touch. Uh, and then maybe throughout the season dripping some educational stuff on them about, hey, here's how to keep your lawn green, or here's the best kind of, you know, the, the, the cheapest kind of shoes that you can get to do your own, you know, home trims, or whatever the case is. Um, but again, it's all based on what are you trying to do ultimately. So if I was this lawn service here, I'd want to say top of mind, so that way when um, right before the summer season comes out and winter's just ending, I can email them and be like, hey, you want to get in the books for getting your lawns mode, you know, first thing in, you know, whatever the first month of, a, you know, summer is for you guys over there. Um, so there's not really one size fits all. The, the short answer would be when you have a new customer and you want to send some email follow-up, you should figure out why are you following up with them in the first place. Try and get the most value out of what it is that they just purchased and make sure that you're priming and, and, and framing whatever the next step is. So if I'm a home, you know, or if I'm like, a, like I said, I'm doing mortgages or the like plant services, I'm gonna start framing and priming people that they're gonna give me refer, uh, referrals pretty much right away, starting to use that language. You use the word recommend, use the word refer. Um, another more advanced tactic is after somebody buys, wait until the consumption period has happened or for them to get it. So if I were to buy a book um, and it shows up in like, you know, three or four days, I'm not going to follow up in five days and say, so, hey, what do you think about the book? Because I need time to read it, right? Um, but follow up with them after a normal time when they would consume is and ask for their, their satisfaction and their feedback right then and there. And then what you do is if someone had a bad experience or they're not liking it, um, you can just personally follow up with them, and I'd recommend that. Um, or if they had a great experience, you can actually ask them, great, do you want to give us a testimonial or do you want to give us a referral? Um, you can be a little smarter about it because obviously if somebody had a bad experience and you ask for a referral, um, you're, you're just going to piss them off. 